Hello, welcome to this video. So, in this video, I'll be discussing a typical lab configuration illustration. And uh, I'll be using this network for quite a number of concepts. I'll use it for um, ACLs and for network address translation for different deployments. And as you can see, uh, we have one router in this network uh, right here and it connects to a switch in our private network, in our internal network, and our internal network has two subnets in it. It has the sales department on VLAN 10, a 192.168.10.0 network, and it has VLAN 20, which is the finance department on 192.168.20.0 network. Now, this router has two sub-interfaces because we are going to configure router on a stick. On gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 0 dot 10, it has 168.10.254. That is going to be the gateway for the sales department. Also, the 0 0.20 has 168.20.254, and this is going to be the gateway for the finance department, which is on VLAN 20. Now, the router, of course, connects us also to the public network, which in our example is the internet, connecting us to the far end server, web server, uh, and the switch that connects the web server, connecting to the egress interface of our, of our egress device, which is our router at 122.1.2.0, connecting to the server at 122.1.2.10. Now, this router has the interface that connects to both VLANs. Uh, that interface will need sub-interfaces configured to it, and we shall do that on that router in order to enable connectivity between our entire network. And as you can see, all, uh, route, all, all networks on this router really are directly attached on the router, so we won't need to configure any routing in our network. Now, for the purpose of this particular illustration, we are going to be doing static NAT. We have a set of public IP addresses right there, and typical mapping that we are going to configure on our router is also right there. So we shall map PC1 to 122.1.2.1, and PC2 to 122.1.2.2, and so on and so forth, based on the availability of our IP addresses. So, um, what I'm going to do right now is to start up our devices by clicking this button right here. And PCs normally start up first, and so as uh, the router, which normally takes longer in this particular topology to start, will start last. And as it starts, I'll be configuring the PCs first with the IP addresses, I'll configure the device name, the IP address, the subnet mask, the default gateway. Now, if you don't understand any of those, you might want to look at our uh, other videos in other classes talking about IP addressing, so you understand the purpose of the gateway and so on and so forth. So, I'll be configuring all IP addresses first. And after configuring all IP addresses, we shall get to the router and start configuring the router. The two interfaces on the router are actually going to have three IP addresses because one of the interfaces, GFNet 0 slash 0 slash 0, has two sub-interfaces and the other one is a direct interface. So, the devices are finished starting. As you can see, the indicators are all green, meaning that uh, layer 1 is up already and layer 2 is ready to be configured. So, so, starting with PC1, the name is obviously PC1. The IP address is 192.168.10.1. The subnet mask is 255.255.250. That's a 24-bit subnet mask and 191.68.10.254 as the gateway. I'm going to do exactly the same for all PCs, and then I will go to the other configurations. So, PC2, and then I'll do the same for PC3, and do exactly the same for PC4. Uh, now that I'm done with all PCs, I will get to this router right here. 
So now for this router, the first thing I want to do is to change its name to router. I do that from the system view, then go to the very first interface of this, uh, sub-interface on this router, give it the IP address shown on the topology, and then go ahead and do dot one q termination on this, oh, sorry, that's a double A right there. Let me remove one of the A's, uh, dot one q termination VID 10, and then I'll do up broadcast enable on this interface because it's a sub-interface. And then I'll go to the second interface, 0.20, and give it the IP address shown on the topology 20.254 do dot one q termination in VLAN ID 20 and do also app broadcast enable for this interface also. Now once I'm done configuring both interfaces I want to go to the other interface facing the other side and I want to give it the IP address shown 122.1.2.1 slash 24 and also quit out of that interface. After configuring the router, I want to configure some VLANs on this switch right here. So first thing is get the system view and set up the device name, switch one. After that, I'm going to go to VLAN batch 1020 to create both VLANs, and then go to, I want to do best practice, give these VLANs names. VLAN 10 is sales department and VLAN uh, 20 is uh, finance department. So after giving them names, I need to get to the interfaces and start putting interfaces their respective VLANs. Interface 1 is an access port and I want this access port to be in VLAN or port default VLAN, excuse me. Um, this is uh, missing the word port here. Uh, port default VLAN 10. I want to put this to VLAN 10. Uh, interface 1 is in VLAN 10. And I'll get right to interface 2. This interface is an access port also because it connects to an end device. And I put it in VLAN 20. Now, uh, sorry, it's just supposed to be in VLAN 20. It's supposed to be in VLAN 10. 1 and 2 are in VLAN 10. I'll go to 3, make it an access port. And after making it, uh, sorry, excuse me, after making it an access port, I'll put it in VLAN 20. I'll do exactly the same thing for interface 4. Make it an access port put it in VLAN 20, and that's done. Now, this interface on the router, interface 10 that connects, uh, interface on the switch that connects to the router, you can see all my VLANs are okay for one to four. Interface 10 connects to the router upstream. This interface needs to be a trunk port because we are doing router on a stick, and this trunk port needs to permit both VLAN 10 and 20. Well, I think that's it for the switch configuration. Great, everything seems to be working fine. So let me get out of this switch and test some connectivity. I'm going to ping PC2 right here. I have replies. Let me also ping PC4 from another VLAN and see. Um, hmm, I have replies. Connectivity seems to be working fine. Everything looks good so far. All right, so now let me configure this server right here. Give it its IP address and give it uh, a subnet mask and also gateway, which is the interface of the, of the router. Uh, let me try to ping the interface of the router from here. Uh, if I try to ping, you realize the packets will not go through. Let me send five packets, ah, all of them failed, just because I didn't save. Let me first save and then try to ping again. And as you can see, this is successful. That's great. Now, when I try to test connectivity from PC1 to the server, I should get replies. Yeah, great. That is uh, good. I get replies. So now I'm going to configure NAT on this uh, router. I'll get to system view first. Let us check the routing table. We can see all the routes are there. They are all directly connected routes, so I don't need to configure any routing. Every network is reachable in this case. All I need to do is get into the outbound interface that connects to the internet and configure NAT for that interface. So I do NAT static global and specify the public IP and also bind that public IP to that private IP right there. So I'll bind it to the private IP. I'll bind 122.1.2.1 and the inside is 192.168. Oh, uh, excuse me, that's a slash right there. I don't need it. And as you can see right here, there is a conflict because uh, this IP is already in use. So I need to change this IP to an, an IP that is not in use. This IP I was using here, one, is used on the interface already. So I'll be using two, three, and four only as my pool. 
Uh, so I will do, uh, uh, they're the ones I'll map uh, to, the, to the IP addresses, the other side. So I'll do dot three and map it to 10.2, and I'll do the global dot four, 122.1.2.4, and map it to the inside 192.168.20.3. So as you can see, one of the internal IPs did not get, uh, let me just confirm that. Uh, one of the internal IPs did not get because we only were able to buy three extra IPs from our ISP and that's what we have for our NAT configuration. So, so far so good. Uh, now what we need to do is to try and reach the server again after configuring NAT. Uh, let us try to ping the server, .10, uh, .1 and see. We still have replies. So what exactly is the difference? All right, let's see the difference. What I'm going to do, I'm going to capture packets at this interface right here just before the data gets into the router, and then I'll get to this interface and also capture packets. But before that, let me reduce this capture window to be on this side, and then I'll open another capture window for just after the data gets out of the, of the router at that point. So let me, let me try to ping again. I want both of my captures visible and the ping window just right in front of them. And I'm pinging the server at 122.1.2.10. All right, let's see. Aha, uh -huh. as you can see, there are captures on both sides. Well, the first is ARP data, the one in yellow. That's not a big deal, we know that. But look at the first ICMP packet. It's coming from 10.1, that's PC1, and it's going to 2.10, that's the server. But look at when it gets out of the router, just look at this side and see. It's getting from 2.2, not just swapped the source IP from 192.168.10.1 to 122.1.2.2 going to 2.10. And when you look at the reply, it's coming from 2.10. From this side, it's going to 2.2. When it crosses over this side, it's coming from 2.10 and it's going to 10.1. That is not at work. In our intranet, we have two networks, dot 10 and dot 20, two VLANs, and in the public network, we are connected through a router. Our internal IPs are not allowed the other side, so NAT in the middle has to be performed by this router to do the conversion. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is implementation of NAT, the particular implementation we call static NAT. But that's not it. I want you, when you try this lab in your own ENSP, to try and ping from PC4 to the server and capture packets. Be very careful on the captures right before it gets into the router and right after it gets, in, after, uh, right after it gets out of the router. Do the captures and in the comments of this video, tell me what you saw. What's the difference from the captures of one, two, three PCs compared to that when you capture PC4? Remember. PC4 did not get a public IP mapped into it. I hope this has been informative for you. Thank you for viewing.